I do, though, I'll show you. The gold standard of my whole life has been working okay. with youth. I'm going to show you some of my first journals on the projector. Then I'm going to show you some pictures of the Arctic, how I got into exploring in order to really advance the new economy, the clean energy economy, and to decarbonize our climate. Uh, we need solid policy. This is, a, this is a coal plant. Part of our mission in climate generation is K-12 education. And you can see as this rises, it starts melting the ice. Now what's the solution to that? I'm Will Steger. Uh, we're at the Expo uh, Elementary School in uh, St. Paul. We've been talking about the Arctic, both poles, polar bears, penguins. The bear actually 200,000 years ago moved from the land to the ice. We have a discussion about the climate. And the big change is that we're getting this extreme weather. Like three years ago, we had major wars. In 2002, the Larsen ice shelf broke up, which I had crossed 12 years before, area 300 miles across. And uh, this is when I got uh, kind of my call to action. I uh, organized and I left my home in Ely in 2002 to start the uh, climate generation. And then I've been working on that for the last 10 years straight on. I've seen a big change in public opinion in the last two or three years, and that's mainly because of the extreme weather events. Pretty nice day, huh? Yeah. Boy. We're always hearing these extreme records. A matter of season, we can go from drought to flood to fires. Uh, and we're, we're an agricultural state, so we're affected economically also. And, um, we were going to pass out the journals. Kids really respond to journaling, especially outside. Try to describe eight things that show us that spring is coming. Now, as a hint, think of you saw the kids, there. once they got outside, they were looking around, journaling, they were seeing one thing and then another thing. Uh, and I journaled as a child, um, and that's why I, I knew this was a, journaling was really important. It was important to me, it really was important in my development. Thanks for coming today. Yeah, my pleasure. Is he moving around or just? It's a, it's a cicada. It's a cicada. It's a cicada. It's a just, just a skeleton. Yeah. There's, there's, the, um, there's, there's a little uh, hole where it broke out. Yeah. My purpose in my life right now is around climate and around specifically building the clean energy economy. I mean, if I see a prosperous economy for these young people I'm talking about today, that's why I'm here. A majority of Americans now believe that we should be doing something to address this challenge. The question is what? You don't want to do anything that upsets the apple cart, that hurts the economy, that puts people out of work. I get that. The one thing I usually bring up is do you love your kids or do you love your grandkids? Do you care about your grandkids? Most rational, sane, God-loving people say, of course I love my grandkids. And I say, well, you should be taking this seriously for their sake. What could be more important than teaching our kids what they're gonna face with the changing climate, teaching them how they can adapt and mitigate the climate change problem? I mean, if we're smart, and if our kids are smart, they're gonna come up with really good solutions to deal with this problem that'll not only help the environment, but it will create jobs. I mean, we want jobs here in Minnesota. Let's be the leader on clean, renewable energy jobs. Traditionally in the past, um, people thought that, well, there was an environment versus jobs situation, and that most communities were actually more geared towards jobs orientation. But what has happened is that we've deepened our understanding that that's not necessarily a real trade-off. Um, that that's actually a false trade-off and that the environment is probably the most important thing that we have and that we can continue to develop ourselves in a way that is respectful to the environment. I can tell you from experience that the Cargills and the General Mills of the world take climate change very seriously. They are baking it into their plans going forward. I know this for a fact. So the smart companies, they don't just dismiss it as a publicity stunt or some sort of liberal hoax. 
We need to be thinking more about the types of and forms of electricity, what sources we're going to be more, become more reliant on. This is why we've really pioneered here in the area of integrating variable renewable resources like wind power, like solar, onto the grid. I'm convinced that we have the people, we have the entrepreneurs, we have the technology to figure it out. We will come up with solutions. What's been lacking so far, especially in Washington, is political will. But I think that's going to change as a new generation, hopefully not as cynical and skeptical as a new generation takes power. That's my hope.